working of the diploma in IFR. Specifically, we're looking at transaction C from question Epsilon. In this question, we're told that Epsilon is a listed entity and that you are the financial controller of the entity and its consolidated financial statements for the year ended the 30th of September 2010 are being prepared. Your assistant, who has prepared the first draft of the statements, is unsure about the correct treatment of the transaction given below. The details of this transaction are that on the 1st of October 2003, Epsilon had purchased an equity investment in a listed entity. Epsilon purchased 1 million shares at the then quoted price of $2 per share. This shareholding does not allow Epsilon to exercise control or significant influence over the listed entity. Epsilon intended to keep the shares for their growth potential rather than treat them as part of a trading portfolio. All the shares were still held by Epsilon on the 30th of September 2009 and at that date their quoted price was $3.20 per share. On the 30th of June 2010 Epsilon sold 600,000 of the shares for $3.60 per share and on the 30th of September 2010 the quoted price of the shares was $3.50 per share. And the requirement is to prepare extracts from the financial statements for the year ended the 30th of September 2010. Now before we've, we can do that we've got to look and see how are we going to treat this equity investment and there are some clues in the question. Firstly we're told that this equity investment doesn't give Epsilon any control so consequently it's not a subsidiary arrangement so we won't consolidate. We're also told that this equity investment doesn't provide any significant in influence uh, in the listed entity so consequently it's not an associate so we won't use the equity method. So as a result then therefore we must have a financial asset and of course it's our intention to hold this equity instrument for the long term. Therefore, if it's held for growth, the correct treatment under IFRS 9 is that we treat it at fair value through other comprehensive income, taking any fair value gains or losses to other comprehensive income in our income statement. Now, let's look at how we account for the financial asset and all the transactions that occurred to that financial uh, asset since acquisition. Firstly, on the 1st of October 2003, we initially recognized the financial asset at cost and the cost is the 1 million shares at $2 per share giving us a cost of $2 million. In the period from the 1st of October 2003 to the 30th of September 2009, the financial asset experienced an increase from $2 per share to $3.20 per share. So over that period we need to recognize a gain of 1.2 million dollars and of course we know that this gain will be recognized in other comprehensive income of the income statements over this period. Also on the 30th of September 09 which is the opening balance sheet for this question we have 1 million shares valued at $3.20 per share so we have a financial asset on our statement of financial position valued at $3.2 million. In the middle of the year on the 30th of June 2010 the company disposes of 600,000 shares and makes a gain relative to their carrying amount of $3.20 of 40 cents on each share because we sell them at $3.60 per share. So consequently we recognize a gain on disposal now even though the financial asset is treated at fair value to other comprehensive income any gain on disposal is taken to profit and loss for the holding company. Now also it's important to note that any previous other comprehensive income gains so this would refer to the 1.2 million of gains previously recognized in other comprehensive income these gains are not recycled through the profit and loss in line with IFRS 9. Now, between the 30th of June 2010 and the 30th of September 2010, there is a further gain in the share price. 
from the value of $3.20 that it stood at on the 30th of June to $3.50 at the 30th of September 2010. And of course we have 400,000 share, shares uh, that experienced that gain, so we have another gain, another fair value gain of $120,000 and again this fair value gain is once again taken to other comprehensive income in our income statement. Now finally, at the 30th of September 2010, on our financial um, on our statement of financial position we have a financial asset represented by 400,000 shares that remain and at the 30th of September 2010 we're told that each of those shares is valued at $3.50 so at the end of the year we have a financial asset of 1.4 million dollars on the statement of financial position so this table summarizes all of the transactions since acquisition for the financial asset in this question. Thank you very much for joining the Micro Learning Institute and for looking at this uh, example of a financial asset from the Diploma in IFR December 2010.